When do you sleep? Now this is a question I get asked a lot because the assumption from the person who asked this question is that in order to be successful and to farm out a lot of content, you must have to work endless hours and particularly put your well-being at risk. When in fact, the opposite is true. I love to sleep. Now, when I was a school leader, it was more of a challenge. It was very easy to be working 80 to 100 hours per week during the academic year. The research backs this up, and for classroom teachers, that data is easily 40 to 60 hours. Uh, it's a tough job. And we'll know that as a result, your productivity can decrease. Your behavior management, those kind of things. Your well being and your health can grow increasingly worse. And your relationships in class, but also potentially at home, can also suffer as well as your sleep. So we know a lot about sleep and we've got a lot of kind of perceptions, but actually it's taken me many years to learn that my greatest assets or my greatest successes follow periods of productivity, quite simply, after a very good night's sleep. So I often say to new teachers, eight hours plus, bottle of water and fruit on your desk, uh, and then at least get you off to a strong start in the classroom. Deadlines we know will come and go, but our ability to fix them uh, can always be at, at risk or jeopardy if we don't prioritize sleep. So in a period of screens and mobile phones, putting those devices away and having a good period of time to wind down will increase your success. So take a look at the research by Microsoft Labs, which suggests that regular breaks decrease our stress and anxiety and instead increase our productivity. The reason I have my audience is not just because of my own teacher wisdom, but because I get a good night's sleep.